Hey, what's going on everyone? Shiva Sapita here with another Tesla accessory review. And today we are reviewing this fully integrated instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, which I'm calling it the best instrument cluster display we have had so far in the channel because it combines so many different instrument clusters into one package and solves a lot of problems that we are having with those instrument cluster displays. This is feature rich, has a HD graphics, has an integrated UI, and it includes other functionalities that were not available before on any of the instrument clusters displays. I teased about this display about two months ago and my apologies it has been so long uh, before this video came out and a lot of you have actually reached out to me on different videos as well as commenting. There were a lot of engagement on that post asking me where this video was and the reason for the delay is because the company had yet to provide all of the features that they had promised and what happens oftentimes is this companies release the product they send us to review it to all the YouTubers and then once we review it they're like yeah we're gonna include all these features in the future and then they move on to a new product and I just wanted to make sure that they deliver in their promises so that I didn't review something with a false promise of yeah we'll do this and that I have been burned before this product has actually been out for about a month but when I saw it it just still didn't have all of those features. You have probably seen other YouTubers review this screen already without all of the features that I'm about to show you today on the video. And they finally sent the software upgrade. I plugged it in and it is not perfect, but I can safely say that this is the best instrument cluster display we have had so far in the channel. This product was sent to us free of charge by Test Studio which is a US best company that sells Tesla accessory. They are based in California and you can actually schedule an appointment for them to install product like this for you. If you are in the area, they have got a real US phone number that you can reach out to. They've also got a web form where you can fill out, they'll give you a code. And based on what I have seen on some of the reviews and just talking to some of the subscribers that I use their services, looks like they have decent pricing. Of course, it depends on what you are getting installed. They also sell products, they also install product and they have a physical location where you can go buy as well as get those products installed for your Tesla. If you use my discount code Shiva Tesla, you should be able to save some money and in return we might make a very small commission at no additional cost to you which greatly helps bring videos like this in the future. They are not paying us, they are not sponsoring us, this is 100% our honest opinion. So let's do a quick unboxing, I'll show you all the wiring and then we'll move on to the installation. Uh, something that is kind of funny here is it says must integrate instrument cluster display. Uh, it even has the capital letter here. Almost seems like a title of a YouTube video <laughs> rather than a product, but we'll see if it holds true with the integration part. I have good faith for this, but we'll find out. So let's first talk about all the wiring and then we'll move on to the display itself. Uh, for wiring here, they send you this one integrated wiring harness, which is great so that you can use it for both Intel and AMD. We have done this multiple times where this blue plug is for the AMD one that's on the A pillar versus this smaller plug is for the Intel cars, which isn't that difficult to access location under the glove box. Uh, this just plugs into the unit itself um, and you have got some power. I'll show you how to do all of this here in just a second, but I really like that approach. Um, it, this is the same approach that Hanser uses uh, is to send you one unit that does both. So there is no confusion of whether you have Intel or AMD. And Model 3 Highland, I don't think this is compatible yet, also uses the same blue plug. So that's great. And then you got a splitter for the power and the ground here, and the camera cable directly plugs in. They also send you a pry tool. For the display itself, they send you a mounting bracket. This just goes under the dash, and there are some holes here. We're gonna use the screws that they sent with the kit to put those and secure them. And this is what the display looks like. Uh, so it has got three inputs in the back. Uh, one is for power, ground, and the camera. So this yellow one is gonna be for camera. Uh, it's just a metal here, and it has got the mounting hardware there. And this is a leather piece. And if we look at it in the front, you got a speaker here. You got a USB-C for software update, and then you have got an SD card slot as well as a SIM card slot. I believe that's what this is for. We'll figure out. One thing that is interesting about this is that the air vent, if you look at it from the back, the, this mounts on the air vent and all the air flow actually goes through here and passes through the instrument cluster and they are making it come out of the top and the side. So you do not lose that airflow, which is a 
very genius design because on the previous designs, they didn't have that where the airflow was just lost and it would block. But this one actually does not block the airflow because it just has that airflow. This reminds me of that F9 hand show hat where they had the airflow coming from the bottom. This one is coming from the top and I think that's even better. Uh, so it's so a integrated system. I was actually expecting this to be a whole entire dash, not just this piece, but this works, I guess. Uh, we'll install it now and then we'll show you what that looks like. The installation is exactly the same as the previous ones where we got to remove this panel on both sides with the pry tool. Then you got to remove this dash. It comes out pretty easily with no issues. And then we're going to tap into the A pillar over there where there is the AMD plug as well as the power as well as for the Intel. It's exactly there underneath the glove box and route everything and then route the front camera from the front bumper all the way here. So that's the overview of the installation. Let's get into the details. To check if you have an Intel or the AMD chip, Go to your vehicle setting, go to software menu, go here and press on this additional vehicle information. And this is where you are going to see, if you look closely on this pop-up here, it will show that infotainment processor is AMD Ryzen. So if you have the Intel Atom, this is where it will show that it is an Intel Atom. Next, we're going to remove the side dash trim panel on both sides of the car. We need to also remove the side door panel on both sides. If your car has an AMD chip, you also have to remove the bottom door panel. Once you remove the side trim panels on both sides, the dash easily comes out. Now after you remove that bracket, I would also recommend you remove this weather stripping temporarily so it is easier to work in this space. There is the next step is to remove this plastic fastener. From here, you can just use a pry tool that came with the kit like this and just remove this plastic fastener from here. It's a super simple step. And when you do that, it actually allows us to remove this entire panel altogether. So if you look at it here, this is loose and we can remove this whole thing and set it aside. Now there is two more things we have to do. One is right here. We got to remove this so we can access the blue OBD plug from inside. So remove this. Now when you remove this, uh, there is the blue OBD plug. That is it, that is our data plug that we need to connect to for this installation. So they're nice enough to send you both male and female of the OBD port uh, because once you plug this in, the Tesla only has a female port there. Once you plug this in, you will lose access to other accessories in the future. So they actually send you both, which is really nice. Now we just plug this in, you still have this end. Uh, you can tap this for now and just cover it using electrical tape, but you don't have to. Now to install this, it's super easy. You take this male end of the plug, align it with the female end of the Tesla, and then simply slide this in. So blue matches the blue. And once you find that spot and align it, you just click it into its place. And there you have it. That OBD is now connected there. This is an extra plug, as I said, so you can connect other accessory in the past and you can just hide that. Now we just need power for this connection which is this plug. Now for the AMD car, this is your power plug and it even says the AMD power source here on the level. And how you install this is super easy. This is your 12 volt power in the Tesla. So this is where we're going to be tapping into it, creating a Y connector. So first what we do is we remove this plug by pinching on the middle here and pulling this plug out. And as soon as you remove it, you take the male end of this new harness and plug it right into the 12 volt port here. And then you create a bypass here and then plug it into the female end. So it clicks into its place. There you have it. The power source is now done and we did the whole Y connector. Everything is happy. Now, this is where having one giant harness for both Intel and AMD is a good and a bad thing. Good thing is then you don't get confusion with, with wiring harness. They don't send you the wrong wiring harness because they just send you for both. But here, if you look at it, this is the Intel wiring harness and we have an AMD car. So what do we do with this? We just have to kind of tug it inside. We're not going to use it. So this cable just stays there. So it just adds more space and we got to be creative on how we hide this, especially if we have a lot of accessories like I do here. Now that was the AMD connection, but if you have an older Intel car, this is how you do that connection. Uh, you don't tap here. You just go underneath here and remove those four plastic fasteners and you'll get access to the computer. Those four plastic screws. You can use a pry tool to remove them. Once the panel is removed, you will see the LED light connector, which can be removed by pinching on the middle tab 
and pulling it out. Then the speaker plug can be disconnected by simply pulling on the plug. This is the difficult plug we need to remove for the cars with an Intel chip. You just have to pinch on the middle tab and while holding it down, pull the plug out. Then take the new harness and plug the male Tesla adapter into the female adapter of the new harness and then take the new male adapter and plug it into the Tesla computer. Make sure to align the plug straight to prevent bending Tesla pins. Again, this is super tedious and requires a lot of patience. At the end, it should make a complete circuit. Let's just start with the camera installation. For those of you who are not interested in the camera, you're gonna skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp for this, but for camera, it is a pretty straightforward installation, but very tedious. Uh, so this is the extension, as I said. So this will take this camera connection and then allow you to connect it all the way towards the front. So this is all wire routing. The camera itself looks like this. And what this does is it has got this lid over here that you can just connect it to either red or black, it doesn't matter. And then um, they send you the hardware for it. Now for this camera connection, this is a plastic hinge uh, that is going to be mounted underneath the front license plate. Or if you don't have a front license plate, we're going to paste this directly on the front bumper. I'll show you where. They send you this very, very strong 3M ADC. We had a previous generation install for about a year now and it is still going well with just the adhesive, no problem. But if you want further security, you can also put this as screws um, in there to secure this. But what you're gonna do is there is a orientation for the camera, it shows you a little arrow that shows going up. So this is the positive. So you wanna face this up like this. And all you have to do is slide the uh, cable through here. So this part and because this is going to be going on the bumper area then what we are going to do is put this out like this and then we are going to put the screws in here so there are two screws that they send the smaller screws and we're going to secure this camera using those two screws right here and that's it so once we secure that we'll paste this on top and then make the camera connection so i've already put one screw over here and it's the same exact process you take one of these screws put it in through the hole here, and then you secure it in place. And there you go. So this is good to go. Now we're gonna go over here and we need to remove this panel, this panel, basically all of this so that we can route the camera harness from underneath here, from the front, through the vents here, all the way towards the inside of the car. The first step is to remove the air vent here. Uh, these are just held down by a couple of clips, so shouldn't be very difficult to Remove this, uh, it just kind of pops out. Again, these are the clips uh, that they are holding it down. So you just have to apply some pressure and then it comes out. Where things get a little bit different between the newer and the older Tesla. So the newer Teslas, if yours look like mine with the AMD chip, you're going to have two 10 millimeter socket screws here and then there's gonna be two 10 millimeter there. So those are the four ones and you are also going to have a little plastic pin here that you gotta remove. Now, if you have an older Tesla, you're gonna have two on the clips here as well as two on the front and I'm gonna show you how to do that here. I have a bookmark in the video to show you older versus newer Tesla. So this is for the newer Tesla again. This is where you're going to remove it. If this is what yours look like, these are the plugs you have to remove. There's two screws here, two screws there. So let's go ahead and remove that now. So you can take a standard socket wrench and then just remove this, or you can also use a drill, uh, whatever your preference is. And just, I'm going to use just a standard socket and then remove this, but you can suddenly use a drill of any power tools to remove this. Once you remove this, an easiest way to keep track of this screw is just drop this inside the the front here because we are going to be removing this whole thing anyway so your screw will go with you uh, if you just put it in the front like that. Next we are going to take care of those two um, screws here. Again it just takes a little bit to get this loosened and then it comes right out. Next, we are going to just grab a pry tool and then remove this screw from here. And you just have to reach on that edge, that's the cutting there, and then this just comes out. That will remove uh, this front panel from this unit here so that you can easily remove this whole thing. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this panel here. As you can see, this is pretty loose already, but we do have to remove this here so that we can release this light so you're not pulling on this light. Now, after you remove this panel, uh, you should be able to just pull this out. 
but for some reason if it is being stubborn you can also use a small pin like this and push down on this bracket the, the little tab that you see here and then that should allow you to just pull this out completely uh, I would prevent pulling on the cables here uh, you should really focus on pulling on this bracket and then as you see it comes out so that's the trick to it is if it is being stubborn this little thing is holding this in place uh, it's a design change from the older Tesla so this is a little bit more difficult but you can just use a little pin to pop this out now that we have removed all of this screw, the front is loose. We can just <laughs> remove this super easily. There's nothing holding this lock. And this, the whole thing just comes out. Remove the top air vent by simply pulling up on it. Be gentle with this process as those clips shouldn't require much force. Remove the HPAC panel by gently pulling on it. It is held by those white clips. Pull up the front latch panel, take it out, and remove the front cable. Remove the front panel screws using 10 millimeter socket. There are seven screws, including the ones under the clips that are in the front. Remove the front panel by just gently pulling on the edges. Make your way around by starting on one edge of the car and go towards the other end. And for those of you who have never seen the interior of a front, this is what it looks like. It is that cover that is hiding all of this mess in here. And uh, when you replace your power front and things, you have to tap here. But um, yeah, now we are going to reach underneath there through the air vents and then take that cable in and then route it from this side all the way to the back there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to install the camera right here. So on the center here, so that the camera faces this way. Uh, we could do it in the bottom here, but as you can see, this is pretty closed up and it's pain in the butt to remove this. Never ever remove this without a plan. This is gonna take you forever to put this back on. Unless you're planning on drilling a hole here, I would recommend you put the camera right here so that it, it, you'll still see the front bumper. I mean, you can put this down, put it straight. I will show you how to do all that adjustment, but I would find the middle point here and then put that camera here. Now we're gonna paste it right here on this plastic part so that the camera kind of aligns here with the front and then the cable we're going to pass it through here and it's pretty easy actually through the air vent when the cable is going in um, i'll show you from the top how i can see my see my hands coming here so i'm i'm putting my finger through here and if we look at it from down below um, you, you are able to see my finger right here. So that's how easy it is to pass that cable. Then it is all about wire routing and taking it to the back. So here's the camera. Here is the cable for the camera. As I showed you earlier, um, this is somewhere in the middle for me, but I don't have to align that quite yet. I am just going to route this cable from the bottom and then I don't need a fishing wire for this because I should be able to just feel it from the top here as I showed you guys earlier and then get the hit the cable so here's the cable from the top and now we can go ahead and install this camera and then route everything to the front so tesla helped me identify where the midpoint is because they put this vent accordingly so there is three of these panels here so one two three this one is in the very middle one two three this one is in the very middle so this is going to be your midpoint exactly as a midpoint before you do anything take a towel and then just thoroughly clean this area maybe put some rubbing alcohol or however you want to put it so that it is clean so that the 3m adhesive sticks really really well on the surface so after you clean it step one is to take this and uh, peel this off from the back here and then attach this so this is the cover for the camera itself now align this um, adhesive with the camera and then just put this in. Now you have got the camera secured here. Now we just need to remove this backing and then stick it here, but just align the camera so that it is in the same distance as this bumper here. So that when you are looking at it, the camera is not showing the object is either too close because if you put it here, it will show too close. If you put it way back, it might not show you as close. So kind of make this a straight so that the camera is giving you the true indication of where the object is. Uh, always be careful because this camera might not show the accuracy. There is no ultrasonic sensor here. It will just show the visual uh, to give you a general idea. So for me, uh, it is right here. And then looks like if I put my camera right at the edge here, it is balancing this out. So all I have to do is 
remove this, the red cover from the other side. So I just have to peel this off and then again once more align this so that I know where the center is. So I have that centered and then here I have this centered as well so that is vertical here and then I'm gonna just lightly press it, step back, look at it and make sure that this feels right, which this feels right to me. Now I can go ahead and just simply push it in to secure it in place. And that is all you have to do. Now the camera is secure and I can adjust the angle as I said. So if I wanna just look straight down, I can adjust it. Or if I wanna look straight to the front, I can do that. I would, mine is gonna look like this because I wanna know how close I'm getting to the bumpers um, to with those blocks, the concrete blocks on the parking. So mine is gonna be facing down like this. However you wanna face this, um, it just make sure that it's not too far in or out. and. Oh yeah, this is secure. This is not going anywhere. But if you want a peace of mind, you can also put the little screws that they sent here to further secure it. But this is good to go. And now all we have to do is route this and then do all the wire routing on the top. I'll show you how I did my routing with the zip ties. As you can see, I kind of routed it along. All these yellow zip ties are the new cable management. So routed here, uh, zip tied it all through. I'm gonna cut those, the end of the zip tie, routed it through here. And then I have passed it through there and that's where I'm going to pass it through the firewall here. Uh, you can put electrical tape, zip ties, doesn't matter. Okay, the things get a little bit difficult once you reach this area after you router the cable all the way through here because we have to route that cable through the firewall to the front. Now, first thing you should do is you should look underneath there and then see if there are any plastic that you can see, rubber that you can see that looks like this rubber that you see here on the left. So first look for those rubbers anywhere on any of those plugs. As you see on mine, Tesla just did a metal. They did not put any rubber anywhere. So I have no space for me to route through there. Um, you can also, if it is easier for you, you can also remove this HIPAA filter here uh, by undoing this 10 millimeter bolt. And then there is one on the other side too. You can also remove this here, the plastic, and then it gives you more access. But I don't have to do that because when I look at it, there is nowhere they left me any space to pass this. Everything is metal. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to tap here. So I am going to make a small slit on this grommet, the rubber grommet here, and then I'm going to pass my camera wire through here. This was the same case when I did my Model 3 as well, that there was no place to put it. So I ended up making a little slit on the firewall down below, but now I don't even have that space. So all I have left is here. Um, I am going to pop that out a little bit, route the wire, and then I'm going to cut, make a small slit to pass my wire through there. Uh, that might be your solution, but you might find other grommets or anything, kind of a leather, plastic, uh, rubber looking thing and then just try to pop that out and see if you can pass it through the firewall. So to route the cable, we have this fishing wire going from here, from that grommet that we talked about. Sorry, the lighting is pretty bad. It's uh, direct sunlight here, but still lighting is bad. So I passed it through there on the side uh, to try to get the cable from the other side. And if we look at it uh, inside, we did found that come through here. So this is the fishing cable, it's already here. Now we are just going to put some electrical tape on the other side and then route it through here. So we're just going to be simply pulling this out uh, so that we have that camera cable that come through. So here is the camera cable. So this is the end, the tip of it. And then this is the fishing cable that we routed to the other side. And all we have to do is use an electrical tape to secure this, then we're gonna pull it from the other side. So just grab a regular electrical tape, and then um, you can also use some of the fishing techniques. Uh, if your fishing cable came with the, the hook and all that, mine doesn't have none of that. So all I'm gonna do is a good old way of securing this with the electrical tape, and then just pulling it from the other side. Okay, so what I ended up doing is just passing this through here, and because this is super thin, this actually seals really well. It doesn't stick out or anything. So the firewall seals. I know this is not the preferred method of doing things. You should probably make a hole here and then pass it if you're absolutely concerned about safety or anything. But the firewall seals in my opinion, and I'm gonna leave it like that. I like non-invasive installations. So rather than making another hole, 
I'm just gonna leave it like that. This is super thin cable, so no issues for me here. And this seals, as I say, I can't see the light or anything there. So I'm gonna leave mine like that. Other side, as you can see, we pass it through the firewall and it's coming right here. And this is the camera wire that we routed earlier. So the camera wire is here. So we got both of those cables and uh, the next step on the wiring then is we are going to grab this splitter. If you look at it, it has the one and two splitter. We are simply going to plug this in to this. So we got that plugged in. Now all we have is three plugs one for the camera, one for power, one for ground, and we're going to route this up. So if you look at it, we kind of hide all the cables and we just route it through here. So now we just got those two uh, cables, or three actually, the plugs, uh, ground, power, and then the camera plug through here. And we're just going to do some cable management to hide everything so we can put this panel back together. Now we are able to successfully put this cover back on, but just be careful when you put this back on to make sure that this cable is kind of free in there because there is one plug that goes down to secure this and another one is all the way on the top. But just make sure that this is free and it's not pinching or anything because that's 12 volt power supply. So if you are not careful with that, Tesla will freak out that the 12 volt battery is draining and you might need a replacement. So please bear, be careful. That is an extremely important step that that connection, the power connection is in a complete loop. Everything is good. Car is not yelling at you and everything is happy and you're not pinching it. Now in this next step, we are going to lay the cable flat on the dash over there and put some masking tape. I know this is an added step, but it makes your life so much easier if you just put this masking tape because we don't want these cables coming into these clips when we put the dash. And it's a hassle, it could ruin your cable. So just put some masking tape to organize this. It makes your life easier later. So after you remove this unit, uh, the dash, it is pretty easy installation. It is all about passing this three wire uh, cables through the air vents directly and you can just pass those down. It got four different support pillars here, which is really nice. They added uh, multiple support pillars. So we are going to be putting the screws from the bottom to secure this. But if you look at it, this is all about passing those wires and finding where the center is. And this depends on your OCD level. Uh, for me, it's probably going to be somewhere here. This is the steering wheel cutout and you just have to align this screen so that it is in the center for you. Uh, some people like perfection. You might have a little bit of harder time finding that, but just align it. One thing that I already don't like about this is this sits as an angle. I don't know why they didn't design it accordingly uh, because Tesla's dash kind of goes around and goes through. They made this straight. Uh, so that's uh, that's a design that they need to change in the future. This is kind of sitting at an angle right now. If you look at it, it just goes at an angle. But uh, this is how you're going to install. Basically, pass this cable through the air vent, install this here on the air vent, and then from the bottom, we're going to bring this pillar in, and we're going to just slap this in here, and then put the screws to secure it. We found a spot where we think uh, this needs to go, and these wires are also level one, two, and three, so you know which one to start from the left side here. So we found that. Now we are just going to pull the wires from the bottom and align this, and then simply rest the display here on top. Now, once you pass this wire through here, kind of make this straight so it aligns straight and it does not move. And we just need to pass this cable from this bracket. And if you look at it, there is that opening for the cable. This notch actually goes faces the, the air vent. So you need to face it where it is flat on the bottom and this notch actually holds onto the air vent. So to do that, uh, we'll just pass this uh, cable through this opening and the bracket, pass this through. Now we can just align it and just make sure that when you're aligning it, the legs that we installed earlier are aligned properly. Uh, so we can insert the screws through here and it will just go to those support legs. And right now I can see the support legs are there. Now we just need to install this uh, screws. Now for the screws, there are four and they send you an extra one for just in case. And uh, because these screws are super small, I've been using this iFixit kit for many years for this small project. As you can see, it comes with a lot of bits. Not a sponsor by Fix It, but it's a really cool tool. I'll link down below uh, if you wanna check it out as well. So we'll just use the screws now. I just got done installing all these four screws. It's a tedious process. Just do it when you have a lot of light flashing in here so that you can actually see 
what those standings looks like from inside and uh, just make sure to fully tighten these screws. These are very, very small. I think they could do a better job installing better standoffs, bigger standoffs, and larger screws. I don't know why they went with such small screws, but just keep that in mind. Now, how this works is if you imagine with the air vent, there are those air vents coming off of Model Y or 3, and there is that inlet, air inlet for this unit here. So all that air is directly going through there and it's coming out from these vents on the top. So that's how this whole airflow system works. And we'll do some airflow testing here in just a second. Now we're almost done with the install. So this is the unit that we installed earlier. All we have to do next is to make all of this connection and make sure that the unit turns on. So for this, we are going to just start with the camera cable. So this is the yellow cable and they just slide it in. No issues here. You just have to align them. And the camera cable is connected. Now we just need to connect the ground and the power cable. So power cable, I'm going to get this connected and the ground cable. And once we connect it, we should see the power come through. Now after we have done some cable management here, just align the dash where it needs to go, insert this back end, put it into its place. And all we have to do is slide this down. So you just need to make sure that this is fully pushed in. You can lift this just a little bit and uh, to align this so that it has a notch there so it will push in but you got to also push this entire unit back and then once you do that it aligns into its place then you can go ahead and secure this whole unit it actually goes in really nicely uh, last time i had a little bit of issue i believe with f9 but this one is going in really well so no issues here so now we just got to put the side brackets on both sides and this is good to go. This is what the final product looks like from the top. Uh, not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of leather. So uh, they said that they made a version that matches with this color, the silver color and had a plastic finish, I believe, to better match with this. I wish they also made a carbon fiber finish to match with the carbon fiber or wood finish for those people that have wood. So that's something that I already noticed it. Not a big fan of leather, but here we are at and I also already noticed that if you look at it here uh, the gap on the right side is larger than the gap on the left side because the dash actually curves but this screen is a straight so if you look from this angle up top you are going to notice that but if you look at it from the bottom and eh, maybe you don't notice it as much so depending on your OCD level just be cautious of that in the left here you get a speaker you got your screen in the very middle and towards the right, you got two slots, one for SD card, one for SIM card, and then one for the USB-C that is for the software upgrade. And now that is out of the way. Let's go ahead and do all the testing and show you all the features. Now let's talk about the controls, the setting, all the UI options. There are two ways to control this screen. One is using the scroll wheel and the other way is using the touch screen. And which is really nice because some screens only allow you to control it using the touch screen and not the scroll wheel, which you know is a safety concern. So to get to the setup menu, all you have to do is press and hold this steering wheel button towards the left and the setup menu comes up. Just keep in mind when you do that, you're also actually changing the car's following distance, which is very annoying, but this is just how it works for now. Hopefully they figure this out in the future. Uh, so let me zoom into all of the settings and show you how you can change those. But just while you are in this screen, as you look at it, you just use the scroll wheel to go between different settings. And then if you press towards the right, the setting changes. And then if you press towards the left is when you exit the settings menu. So let's zoom in there, show you everything there. Now, another way to get to the same setup menu is by simply sliding down on the top and you have a bunch of menu icons. We're going to talk about each of those here in just a second, but then you press on the setup and these are all the setups. And some of this might look blurry on my camera. That is not in reality. It's not blurry. It is very crisp and clear. For some reason, my camera is trying to autofocus here. So just wanted to put that disclaimer. Of course, that is to return. There is language. There's time zone, there is uh, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, and to change between different things, you just press here, and it goes to Celsius. And now it is Fahrenheit. So that's uh, the setting for the temperature. There is the 12 hour versus 24 hour, the US speed limit. This is the one where it changes from that round uh, speed limit with the red, like the European style to US based with the square background. Um, 
battery speed limit, uh, the tire pressure, the car model, you can change to different cars. This is UI 1, and we're going to go through uh, here in just a second what other UIs look like. There is the brightness. You can follow the car's brightness, which is great. The plat switch is the one that shows the plat animation uh, when you do the startup. There's Wi-Fi, OTA upgrade. I think OTA, I never trust that OTA upgrade thing. They'll still send you flash drive with upgrade, so you can ignore that. There's the front camera, so you can either uh, uh, show the front camera or not show the front camera. If you want to show the front camera, you just toggle this to on. Audio output, the power amplifier basically means that speaker is going to have all the audio output of this system. But if you click on it here, it says original Bluetooth, which means you can connect this display to the car's Bluetooth. And we'll do some testing here in just a second. And then this is split screen. So if you want to show full screen CarPlay, Android Auto and camera, you put this as a full screen. If you want to show the car's information here on the right and then show the CarPlay and everything on the left with a split screen, then you put it a split screen. And those are all the settings. So we just return back and you get to the main menu. Now this is your UI number one. And if you look at it, it shows all the critical car information. And if we were to turn on the turn signals, uh, of course it will show the high beam is fully integrated aligned with the car. And it shows the speed here. It's using Tesla's fund. Of course we saw that in Model 3 Highland uh, and some of the Model X and X Plaid. And the bottom one has the regenerative versus the uh, the energy bar and then uh, it shows the temperature. One thing that this is missing on the front screen is along with the percentage of the battery, I want to see the actual range as well. So that is that has, I've already told them about that. So hopefully they're working on that fix. But it's really nice. So if you were to put this car into drive, it changes that animation and it shows the drive there. And then if we put it into reverse, it changes the animation to go back to reverse. So we saw that with one of the, the nice UI uh, instrument cluster display that we reviewed a couple months ago. Uh, we of course saw that and this is really nice. They, they did a really good job at showing that. So that's the drive versus reverse, which is super cool. I like that animation there. And put in park, of course goes back to the car icon there. Now that is UI number one, very simple UI. Let's go to settings and change this to UI number two. When we return, things don't change here much. The main screen still stays the same, but when we put it, the car into drive, that is when you see this, where there is the speed on the left, shows that animation there, the car. This is your traditional dial UI that we are used to seeing. And then there's a the tire pressure there, and uh, if we were to use the scroll wheel, so either you can go over here and then swipe this towards the left or right. So that is one option that you have. Or if you just use the scroll wheel, then you can go between different setup. And this does not change when you are in autopilot. So if you put your car in autopilot, then this scroll wheel does not work for this screen. Um, you have to get out of autopilot to not interfere with autopilot, which is really great. Uh, the setup, the Android Auto CarPlay, the forward camera, and if we were to just press on the forward camera, that's when you see the front camera there on a split screen view, and we can just get out of that by just pressing here towards the left, and you get into the UI number two there. So that is UI number two, and uh, the same um, thing works, but the touch screen does not work when you are in drive, which is, I think that's a pretty smart move just for safety reason. You do have to use this for the one you are in drive. And if you press this towards the left, then you get into the settings menu just using this. So let's keep this in drive and then let's change this to UI number one. And then let's go back. So this is what the screen looks like while driving. My camera is not doing a justice of how good this actually looks in real life. They did a really good job at mimicking that screen that we really like. The, the HD uh, graphics one, and it has got everything there. Now, if you want to control this, you can still use the scroll wheel to go between different things like CarPlay and Android Auto, the setup, and the front camera. So you have that available at all times, and looks pretty good. 
I mean, it shows the speed. They are definitely using the Tesla-like font that we commended them on that one screen that they had made. So it's, uh, it's a really good upgrade compared to what we are used to seeing. So this is your UI1 and it's everything that you see with UI1. Now, if we were to put the turn signal, it shows in the bottom, there's that. And then of course, the very bottom bar shows the regenerative braking versus acceleration. Now we're going to turn on the autopilot and show you what that looks like. There's the autopilot sign there, which is really nice. And the nag. Now in the past, we have had issues with navigate and autopilot with the autopilot sign showing. So let's do that testing. And they figured it out. Now the autopilot sign shows up, even though we are in navigate and autopilot here. Let's say if we come to a complete stop with the traffic like this, the UI actually changes when you apply brake and stay here for just a second. As you look at it, it shows you, okay, you need to start driving, push the pedal, and then that goes away again once you start moving. Now here's the UI number two. For those of you who like the dial, they kept the dial, and I believe that right dial is supposed to be horsepower. Uh, but I couldn't find that option. I have already told them to fix that. But what happens with that dial is if you look at it very, very closely, there is that, you see that the dynamic, it goes up and down. And I think that is horsepower. And same with the speed. Of course, these two dials are not going to go up and down at the same rate because the speed does not increase as much because it needs to go you know, it can go all the way to 140. So I think that is what it is, is uh, that is gonna be a little bit slower than the right. But if you look at it, they do have the dial option. Another thing that is good about this UI is the lane lines dynamically move. So right now we're about to turn and if you look at it, it is turning with the car. So the dynamic lane lines are there. We saw that with the F9. Uh, screen from Hanshaw, of course, and they replicated that here. Uh, I hope that they also incorporated that with UI number one, because right now the UI number one does not show the lanes being dynamically being able to turn that. But here is another view for you with the lanes turning with the car. This is the blind spot test. Here is a close up of what that looks like. Now let's talk about the front camera. So if you toggle that on and if it is in a split screen view here, if we go back, we are right now in a park. As soon as we put the gear to drive, the camera populates and it is in a split screen. So towards the right, you still see everything, the car's information, and then towards the left, you see that front camera there. And it's a pretty wide angle camera, but the camera goes away automatically after the speed reaches to 20 miles per hour. So you don't even have to do anything. You just let it go for a little bit. And once you reach 20 miles per hour, so let's say right now it is zero miles per hour, of course. As soon as we put it in drive, the camera comes back on. So until it reaches 20 miles per hour, it is going to stay on. So here, 20 miles per hour, so 17, 19, 20. That went away. Now there's another way you can get rid of the camera is just by simply pressing this towards the left and then the camera goes away if you don't want that camera. So that is in the split screen view. Now we've turned on the camera in full screen view. So let's go back here to home screen and let's put this in drive. And we got the full screen camera and same deal at 20 miles per hour, this is going to go away. So accelerate and that went away at exactly 20 miles per hour. So let's do a quick demo of that plaid switch. So I turned on that animation. We're gonna put this car into drive. And as we drive, there is your plaid animation. I'm supercharging right now. And as you can see, it shows the supercharging sign. So it is time for our infamous airflow testing with this paper method. And as I said earlier, all of this that you see from the top, as well as all the way to the side, that is an air vent. So the airflow is being observed from here, from the vent, and then the airflow is coming through here, and then they are being released from the front. So 
it shouldn't block as much airflow, but let's find out. So this is the control. So if you see, the paper is barely moving because of course the door is open. So this is your control. So you know what that looks like. So if we do here, there's nothing because it is zero. The temperate, the airflow is set to zero. Now let's up this to one. So this would be your airflow one. And when we put in one, as you can see, it's already moving closer to those air vents there, which is a good sign. So it's already moving a little bit there. Now here, eh, not so much, but as you see, it is moving. So we know that the air is coming and I can feel the airflow coming through. So it is doing a little bit of its job. And uh, frankly, even over here where there is no, uh, this instrument cluster display still feels the same amount. So I'm not too disappointed. Let's go to number five here. So this would be five. And if you look at it, there's a lot of airflow and this is going directly to my face and that's what I care about, right? Like that's the biggest concern we have with this instrument cluster displays is the airflow going to my face. Now let's put this closer here and if you look at it, yeah, it's definitely airflow and those vents are doing their job, which is really good. Now let's up this to 10. So this is blasting, and of course, if you look at it, there is a lot of airflow. Let's put it in front of my face here, and I get all of that airflow. Even with such a large instrument cluster display here, that's a lot of airflow that you're seeing. So airflow-wise, I think it checks out. To access the buttons, all you have to do is slide this from top down while well, the car is in park and you get all of this menu, the volume up or down, you get the settings, you get CarPlay, Android Auto, and these are all the buttons there. So if you look at it, the first one, it unlatches the front passenger door. And if we press there, it unlatched it. And it showed right here on the screen that the front passenger door has been unlatched. This one does the rear left door and you can kind of see it here as well. This did the rear right door. And if you look at the screen, it changed all of that. So it already includes that button. And if we press this, it folds the mirror. So we got the mirrors folded. And if we press it again, it unfolds the mirror. So it shows that. This is for the seat recline. I'll show you how to do the seat recline here. Now this button, uh, if you press once, is for seat recline. The next is for battery preconditioning. And the preconditioning is actually happening. I could hear the car. When it is red, the preconditioning is active. But once this is not red, so if we were to press on it, it will turn off in a little bit. Then it will just go away. The preconditioning will go away. And the way I know the preconditioning is working is if I press here, um, it shows that now the preconditioning has been turned off, but it was active earlier. This is for the trunk. It opens the trunk. This is for the glove box. So if we were to just press on this button just once, the glove box opens. And then the other one is for the frunk there. So they incorporated a lot of those buttons that we have seen, the typical button directly here. So here is the demo of the seat recline. So if I press this, the seat moves towards the front. If you look at it, uh, it goes up. Uh, if I press and hold, nothing happens. I think they need to incorporate that feature. When I press and hold, it needs to keep going up or down. But this is the back one. So if you look at it, goes to the back. So that is the seat recline for you. All right, let's do a iPhone, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto testing. And for iPhone, uh, for CarPlay, you just press here on CarPlay and it says connect to Bluetooth car kit 9E43. So let's go to the Bluetooth on our iPhone and we see that should be pretty straightforward. It says pair, allow, and then it should ask us if we wanted to use CarPlay. And it says connecting on the screen on the back and uh, should ask us for permission to connect to CarPlay. Use CarPlay and that should connect. There you go. There's CarPlay. And that was super easy. Now that's just a one-time deal. Now once this is connected, we don't have to worry about it connecting it again. Next time you come inside the car, uh, this will automatically connect to CarPlay and you'll have CarPlay on your screen here. And of course, this is a full on CarPlay. You got Waze, 
you got Google Map, um, you have various other apps here and it's going to be as quick as your phone. So that's really good. Uh, you have all of that option now and directly embed it in your screen. It's a very large CarPlay there. And if you wanted to do a split screen, then you change the setting where the CarPlay would only be on the left side. The right side still has the car's information, but I think I would prefer the full screen mode like this for CarPlay. And uh, if you do that as well, then uh, you, you've got yourself here. CarPlay, Waze, Calls, Music. You can go through all of this here directly. Okay, now that was Apple CarPlay. Now let's move on to Android Auto. It's the exact same deal. We go to Android Auto and it shows the car kit that we need to connect to. So let's go ahead and zoom into this phone here a little bit. Pair a new device and we are going to find that same Bluetooth, so car kit. And we're going to pair it and it is showing if we wanted to pair with this code connecting and it is active and it says it's connecting and it says allow access to messages I'm going to allow it that basic zoom in and out basically indicated that it connected to the the android auto which is the equivalent of the carplay on the iphones and this is just going to take a second right there it says Google Map needs location service access, which will give you the access here in just a second, but you have got Android Auto here. And if we go there, you see the Android Auto apps. Of course, you can use Waze, you can use Google Map, you can use anything that is available here, voice activation. And this is what I was talking about, the split screen view earlier. So with the split screen view, earlier when CarPlay, I showed you that you have the full screen. Now this is the split screen, I turn it on. And now you see the car information on the right, the Android Auto on the left. And that is the full version of Android Auto that you see here. And you can just exit out of this and you can go back to the main screen. Now anticipating your audio question, how this works is that whatever you are playing on the Android Auto here is going to be projected to this screen there and car plays the same thing is going to be projected there on the screen and the audio can come out in multiple different ways one is you can just have the audio come out of this little speaker if you prefer that or if you want to take advantage of tesla's speakers then there is two things you can do one is just leave your phone connected with this display as well as your tesla screen most modern phone allow you to have dual bluetooth uh, settings so that what you can do is connect this to bluetooth to this display but keep your phone connected to your screen at the same time when you do that what happens is all the audio that you are playing through android auto or carplay will go directly to the tesla screen it'll play from tesla speaker but you still get the visual on this screen so if you get a call you'll still see it on this screen all the visual will still be there but the audio will just come out of the tesla screen now, third way, I, which I do not recommend because there is always audio issues with that way, is you connect this to this screen through Bluetooth and have the Android Auto. Then you connect this screen to Tesla's screen. And to do that, you just have to go to connect phone and add a new phone. And I do not recommend that method because there is always an audio lag. You sound very robotic on the phone call. So I do not recommend that method when we have a perfectly viable options where either it is this speaker or leaving the Tesla's uh, the phone connected directly to the Tesla and also connecting with this at the same time. So those are your audio options. So I've showed you the installation guide. I've showed you the product in action, all the functionality and feature that it exists with this instrument cluster display. Uh, here is my verdict. Uh, my like, of course, includes the integration part of it. They took all of our feedback and they combined so many different instrument cluster displays into one instrument cluster display that packages everything. Now we have a front camera, the side uh, blind spot detection. We have got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, we have got a integrated design that looks like a typical instrument cluster display that goes in the front without sacrificing the airflow that it comes with the air vent there. Upgraded UIs and some of the upgraded features such as including the functionality of those physical buttons directly here on the screen so that, you know, this is more like a five-in-one instrument cluster display if you look at it each of those products separately so they did a really good job so kudos to the company and i really really hope that they continue to upgrade this via software upgrade and make it better continuously that is 
what they promised me. But again, I cannot guarantee with this company because I think they are going to do it. And then they just abandon the product and move on to something new. So I really hope that Tesla Studio keeps their promises and keeps upgrading this and make it better. I mean, they have already done so much work to bring this product with so many different functionality. I really hope that they add a few more features that I have that I talked about in the video as well as everything that you are going to comment in the comment section below. Please let me know, let Test Studio know through the comments in the video down below uh, of what features they should add next and functionalities that you are looking for on instrument cluster that is possible with Tesla software update today. Now on to a couple of things I do not like about this setup. Um, with the, this UI here, I don't like why there is this blue circle around the tire pressure. I think they could do a better job just removing that blue circle. I don't know why they have that blue circle there. So that needs to go. And then I don't know what this ready means. That can go away. They need to put the battery percentage as well as the range at the same place. Uh, and then this, uh, it says the, the speed, I think it would be more natural for the speed to be right here in the middle. So we don't even have to look towards the right there. It needs to be here on the top. So hopefully they make those changes um, soon with the software upgrade. They have been pretty open to upgrading the software uh, based on my feedback. So hopefully that works out and please let me know what other changes they need to make. But some of those changes I think would just take this to the next level. The UI is a little bit choppy right now, so they gotta fix that as well. If you look at it very closely, the car is there, and if I put it into reverse, something changes on the car. I don't know what, if it is just a misalignment of the seat colors or whatnot, it's beautiful here, but once you put it into park, you'll see it a little bit better that it's not an instant. Like the Tesla one, if you put it in reverse, it just goes, and then if you put it in park, it comes. I wish it was that smooth, but here it takes a second and it changes slightly. So hopefully they figure it out where it is very smooth like the Teslas. And then I think there is a little bit of oversight with the curvature of the display as well as the dash in the front. I think they should make this a little bit curved. And then I think there is a little bit of a missed opportunity here as well. I think they should have change this so it stretch this all the way to cover this edges like some of the other displays that we have seen and just make this glass and put information here even if they wanted to separate it with the rectangular versus this curved here i think they could have done a little bit of a better job with the design uh, so i hope that future iteration of this product does include a full bezel right here and covered everything with the screen so that it looks more integrated but again impressive product i really like it so if you are in the market for an instrument cluster display i would highly 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 recommend this display compared to any other displays that we have reviewed because it includes everything from the other displays combined into one package thank you very much for watching this video if you found this video helpful please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and come back again soon for another tesla accessory